Dodger program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles police calling all cars, attention all cars, to broadcast 266 regarding a murder. Be on the lookout for three suspects, described as about 16 years of age. Last seen heading east on Highway 66. These boys are armed and dangerous. That's all. Rolls and quits. <laughs> Pan American Conference in Lima, Peru, 20 of the 21 republics were in agreement almost from the first. But that wasn't enough. They didn't sign any declaration of solidarity until every delegation was ready, because it had to be unanimous in order to be effective. In a way, that situation is paralleled by our December test of listener loyalty, now rapidly drawing to a close. A large percentage of you have rallied to our friendly request that you make one visit to the Rio Grande station in your neighborhood and your response in recent weeks has been heartening to watch. What you purchased, or how much it cost, wasn't important. It was the principle involved. At the same time, there are some of you friends of calling all cars, and we know you are friends because you seldom miss a program, who either missed the announcement or have been putting off your errand of loyalty. And there's only one day remaining in which to join Rio Grande's vast army of friends in showing our generous sponsor who puts the bills to give you this program a unanimous vote of confidence in the program members of the cast, and myself. Will you call on your nearest Rio Grande dealer tomorrow? It will be your last opportunity in 1938, and buy one quart of real lube or some cracked gasoline to demonstrate in the most practical way you could employ your allegiance to calling all cars. The story we are to hear tonight has been taken from the confidential files of the district attorney of Los Angeles County. We have therefore asked District Attorney Buran Fitz to open our program. Mr. Fitz. Much criticism has been leveled at the youth of today. We hear on every side that our youngsters are headed for perdition. Those of us who are willing to face the facts realize that much of this indictment is true. Nevertheless, I personally feel that the young people of today as a whole are no worse than the young people of yesterday. This fact, however, we cannot deny. The American home of today is not the settled, normal, old-fashioned American home of the past. Certainly, the three boys about whom we are to hear in this program would not have turned out as they did had they been subjected to a more sane, sensible home life. It is not only the habitual criminal, but the parents, and the youngsters of today to whom we must bring the lesson that crime does not pay. Just how it affected the lives of the persons in our story, we shall hear as the program progresses. Our story opens in a small home in Philadelphia. A boy has just come home from school. Where are you, Mother? I am, Bill. Oh, what have we got for dinner? What? What's the matter? What are you crying about? Oh, the same thing I cry about every day, son. Oh. Was Dad home yet? No. And I'm worried half to death for fear he stopped at some saloon and is drinking up his paycheck. Paycheck? Why, I thought he quit his job. He's been threatening to quit for a week. But I begged and pleaded with him to keep on working till you or I can find some kind of a job. Then he can do as he pleases. I'm through with him. You mean... You're going to leave him for good? Don't, don't ask me any questions, I'll be Just go and see if you can find your father. The rent's due tomorrow, and he gets to drinking and spends all his money. Yeah, I'll go over to Dugan. That's where he generally stops on Saturday. <laughs> Old Dugan cashes his check for him and, and shoves the liquor at him until he gets all the money back. But if Dad's there and he's got any cash left, well, I'll get it somehow. But don't hang around the place, son. If he's there, try to get him to come home. If he can't do that, try to get his money away from him in some way. Get back here as soon as you can, so I won't have to worry about you, too. All right. I won't be long. Oh, and try to dig up something for supper, Mother. I'm hungry. Hello, oh, young fellow looking for your old man? Of course I am. Is he here? In the back room. Did you cash his paycheck for him? Sure, I'm always ready to do anything to help the fellows who work in the neighborhood. Yeah, and always ready to shove a bottle at them until they haven't got a cent left for food for their wife and kids. Oh, smart, ain't you? Well, I don't want any of your wisecracks. Now go on and get that old bum and drag him out of my place. 
drank enough. Has he... Yes, he has. Go on back and take a look at him. He's out cold as a mackerel. You dirty rat. Dad. Dad, wake up. Dad, come on, let's go home, will you? Listen, Mother wants some money so she can get something for supper. Dad, wake up, I tell you. Yeah, Dugan was right. He's out cold. Well, I'll take the money anyway. Wait, 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 wait. Let me alone, Winner. What do you want, huh? Here, get your hands out of my pocket, you little thief. Mother said to get what money you had left, and I'm going to do it. Take your hand out of my pocket or I'll slap your teeth out. No, I'm not. Not till I get this money. You <laughs> won't, eh? <laughs> oh, oh. oh. What do you like that, huh? Oh. Now you leave me alone. I want to go to sleep. All right. All right, go to sleep and stay here as long as you please. I don't care if you never come home. And don't give me none of your lip or I'll smack you again. Yes, I know you will. But you're going to smack me just once too often. And mind your I... business, Jamie. Sneaking in here and stealing the money out of my pockets. Well, why don't you bring your money home like other men do? You know Mom hasn't got a cent in the house. Don't you suppose we've got to have something to eat? Yeah, and Mother's sick, too. She needs money for medicine. Boys should have respect for their fathers. Now, you know... How can I have I... any respect for you when you act like this? All we want is enough money to pay the rent and buy food. Yes, yes. I could have some decent clothes to wear to school if you didn't spend all you made on liquor. Yeah, you mind what you're saying, huh? You know it's true. I look like a tramp. I'm ashamed to be seen at school. And it's all because well, it's you... it's not always... my fault. I, I'm a victim of circumstances. Oh, Dad. Dad, why don't you try to straighten up? Yeah. When I think of the money you used to make and, and the swell home we had and, and how happy Mother was, and you're going to lose her, too, if you don't stop all this drinking. Yes, she sure. told me so just a few minutes ago. <laughs> She's sick and tired of your drinking. She's yeah. going to leave you. Yeah, let her leave then, and you can go, too. Now, go on, get out of here. Get out and let me alone. Yeah. You're not going to take another drink out of that bar. Turn loose, sir. No, I'll smash it on the floor if you don't. I'll smash it against your head. Now, let me go, you hear? I'll show you whether I'll drink or not. All right. All right, stay here and drink your head off. Hey, come back here with my money. You just try it. You again. wait till I get home, I'll teach you to steal it from me. Found him all right, did you, kid? Yeah. Yeah, I found him. What's the matter with your mouth? Where'd the blood come from? It's a present from my old man. Oh, socked you, huh? Well, if he's in a fine mood, you better get him out of my place before he starts trouble. Listen, you got him in that condition. And if you want him out of here, you can get him out yourself. Hey, come back here. Wait, now, Just a minute, son. I have to put a piece of adhesive tape over that cut place on your lip. The idea of him striking you in the mouth with his fist. No, I'm just glad he didn't hit me with that bottle. I thought he was going to for a second. You know, Mom, I sort of feel sorry for Dad in a way. He has had a lot of tough breaks. But... Other men have had tough breaks too, Bill. But they don't just quit and let their families suffer for their misfortune. Oh, I know. And I still respect him as my father, but... Well, when he's in the condition he's in now and starts slamming me around... Well, I told him today he's going to do it just once too often. No, let me fix that cover your mouth. It's hard to take abuse, son. But your father's not himself when he's drinking. You must remember that. Yeah. I suppose if I ever did forget myself and hit back at him, he'd, well, he'd have to kill me. He's big enough to do it. Yeah, and mean enough, too, when he's full of liquor. There he is now. Put that money out of sight where he can't find it. Uh, here you are, the two of you, huh? Yes. I've just finished patching up Bill's face. Not content with humiliating us in every other way, you use your fist on your own son in a public saloon. You've got a lot of nerves to talk to me about humiliating somebody. The idea of sending that boy down to Dugan's place to pick my pocket. If I want you to have my money, I'll give it to you. Then why don't you do it? Yeah. Do you suppose I wanted Bill to go into that dirty dive? Yeah. I had to send him so that we'd have money to eat and pay the rent tomorrow. I'll pay the rent. I'm the head of this family. You wouldn't have had a dollar left if Bill hadn't taken it away from you while you were in a drunken stupor. Yeah. And you wouldn't be home until midnight if you had a cent left to buy any more of Dugan's rotten liquor. You're smart, ain't you, huh? The head of this family. Yeah. You were once, yes. When you were a respectable businessman and your wife and child had a decent home. I the don't want to home. hear none of your preaching. You won't have a chance to hear it after today. I've had all I can stand of you, George Prince. I've stuck to you through your bad luck as well as the good. And now... Now what? Now I'm through. Yeah. I can't stand any more. I'm leaving you. We're leaving me, are you? This is all your fault, you meddling brat. I told you, 
When you left Jugans, I'd attend to you when I go home, and now I'm going to do it. Look out now, Dad. You're yes. drunk and you don't know what you're doing. Yes, sir. You'll know what I'm doing for him through with you. Let him alone. I'll teach him to make trouble in my home. No, arm. I say you shan't do it. You'll turn loose my armor and give you some of the same thing. You just try that. You put your hands on yeah, the and I'll... what? I'll break your head with this chair. Oh, yeah? Please, turn loose my armor, no. then. No, I won't You do won't, eh? Well, maybe this will teach him not to interfere in my business. No. You very low down rat. Done to him. I told him not to lay his hands on you. You've hurt him. He's badly. I don't care how bad he's hurt. He had it coming to him. Has the police gone yet, Mom? No. They're in the kitchen. In the kitchen? What are they doing there? Investigating. They don't believe the story we... We told them about your father falling and striking his head on the sink. But did you find out why they came here? I mean, how they found out about Dad? Yes. The doctor told them the case looked suspicious. Bill, you've got to leave here at once. Leave? What? Your father's hurt worse than we thought. I'm afraid the police are going to arrest you. Well, all right, let them arrest me. Gee, I guess the boy's got a right to protect his mother when his drunken father starts to slam her around. No, no Bill, I, I couldn't stand it. I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown now. If they put you in jail. All right. All right, Mom. I'll go. Here's the money you, you took from your father today. Oh, but that's for next month's house rent. There won't be any house rent to pay next month. Here. Take it and, and use it for your railroad fare. Well, where do you think I ought to go? To your Aunt Margaret in Los Angeles. I'll send her an airmail letter explaining everything. But no, now hurry. Pack a few things in your suitcase and slip out the window before before the police come in here to question you. Uh, what do you do at night? Oh, I got plenty to do at night. You see, I'm in my senior year at high school here, and boy, they sure do pile the homework on me, too. Boy, you sure do lead an exciting life. Well, boy, what do you do? You'll be surprised. Hey, Johnny, shoot me that old fastball. Yeah. Ah, boy. Boy, Say, why don't you meet Johnny and me tonight and really have some fun? Well, I... But What's the matter? Want to leave the house? Oh, sure. I can go anywhere I want to. Jiminy, my aunt's always asking me why I don't meet some of the fellas and go out sometime. She doesn't like me to stick around the house so much, but... But you see, I've only been out here in California about two months, and I don't know many people. Where'd you come from? Philadelphia. You from Philly? Yeah. Gee, so am I. Yeah? Yeah, that's Johnny's hometown, too. That's why me and him are such good pals. Hey, Johnny! Come here. Well, how long have you fellas been going to school here? Oh, we don't go to school. We just wandered over here and started playing catch when we saw a couple of guys drop the ball in gloves. What do you want, Dick? Here's another guy from Philly. Yeah? What's his name? Well, I don't know. I ain't bothered to ask him. Oh, my, my name's Trent. Bill Trent. Okay. I'm Johnny Rutledge. And I'm Dick Morrow. He thought because we was playing catch on the grounds here that we went to school. Uh, I should say not. Our school days are over. Over? You mean you've graduated? No, he means we've quituated. Oh, we left school six months ago in Philadelphia when we decided to see the world. Yeah, we've been tourists ever since. Gosh, you must have lots of money to travel around like that. What kind of work do you do? Work. You hear that, Johnny? Uh -huh. What do we want to work for? Well, I don't know, but if I wasn't living with my aunt, I'd sure have to work. And gee, as it is, I don't get any spending money. Unless it's just a little change to go to a picture show once in a while. Yeah, how do you like it out here? Mm, it's all right, I guess, but well, you see, my mother's back in Philadelphia. I told her I'd rather be with her. Is your aunt good to you? Well, she's all right, but... I don't have anybody to pal around with. Well, how about your uncle? Can't you go places with him? My aunt's husband, you mean? Oh. They've been separated for years. But she's still young enough to enjoy beach parties and swimming and things like that. Well, then why don't you go along with her? Because she doesn't want me to. She's always got some fella on the string, and I'd just be in the way. So I either stay at home or go to the picture show by myself. Yeah, no wonder you'd rather be back with your mother in Philly. Yeah, and I'm going back, too, just as soon as I can. Tell you what you do, Bill. Yeah? You meet me and Dick tonight at 4th and Broadway, and we'll show you a little excitement. 4th and Broadway? Yeah. Okay, I'll be there. Uh-oh, there's the bell. I gotta go to class now. Oh, say, what time shall I meet you? About 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Okay, I'll be there. So long, fella. So long. So long. What's the matter, Aunt Margaret? I've hardly eaten anything. I'm not hungry tonight, Bill. You're worried about something, aren't you? I had a letter from your mother today. Bad news? Very bad. Is mother sick? No. She isn't sick. It's, it's your father. Oh. <laughs> Still drinking and making mom's life miserable, is it? 
Your father is dead, Bill. Dead? Dead? Your mother sent this special delivery airmail letter yesterday. It just passed away when she wrote it. But I, I thought he was getting better. In her last letter, Mom said he was... I know. She didn't want to worry you. She never did tell you the worst, Bill. What do you mean? Your father never left the hospital. He never recovered from me. The accident. The blow on the head. Oh, no. No. You mean that I'm responsible for... The police think your mother is to blame. They've arrested her and charged her with manslaughter. She told them she struck your father. But... But they can't do that. She didn't have anything to do with it. She's trying to protect you. She told the police that she was entirely responsible. I'm going home, Aunt Margaret. I'm going tonight. But how will you get there? You haven't any money. Listen, can you loan me enough for railroad fare? I'll pay it back just as soon as I can. I'm sorry, Bill. You know how hard it is for me to make ends meet. I just barely have enough to get by each week. Maybe you could wire your mother. She could borrow the money from some of her friends. No. No, I've caused Mother enough worry as it is. Now, never mind. I'll get there somehow. I better go up and pack my thing. Gee, it's swell of you and Dick to go along with me, Johnny. You know, I never rode a freight train in my life, and, well, if you hadn't been willing to come along and help me out, I don't know how I'd ever get home. Oh, forget it. We're pals, ain't we? We was figuring on going back next week anyhow. Yeah, decide it's just like we told you. We're tired of this town, and Philadelphia sounds mighty good to us. We've been away from home long, and you have. I'm keeping the shadow of these boxcars going. Stick close to Johnny and me. Yeah, and if anything happens and we take it on the run, you just follow us and keep your mouth shut. You understand? Oh, yeah, sure, I understand, but... Well, I don't understand why you're carrying that gun. Now, look, I don't want to get mixed up in a shooting scrape. I'm in enough trouble now. You ain't going to get no trouble as long as you do what we tell you. But what are you carrying the gun for? So we can uh, go up our way through him in case we run into any tramps or other bums in one of the cars. Sometimes they try to throw us off the train. Hey, and Dick, you, don't... you and Bill come over here and see what I found. Yeah? What is it? A car loaded with canned goods and the seal on the door was already broken. Oh, yeah? Well, you wouldn't kid us, would you? Come on, Bill, crawl in. Hey, this is risky, ain't it? If they catch us in an empty car, it'll be bad enough, but if we're... Go on, in... crawl in. I don't know how lucky you are. At least you can eat till you get arrested. Oh, shut up, Dick. Ain't he gonna have enough trouble with the cops when he gets home? Don't keep rubbing it in. Hey, fellas, quick, here comes somebody. Get back in the car, Bill, and keep quiet. That's a yard, detective. I can tell by the way. Hey, you, come out of the car. Quiet. Get your gun ready, Johnny. Gun? No, you said you only had that to scare off tramps. Right, right down. But this man's a detective. He's an officer. You can't... Come out of there. You're all under arrest. He's coming for us, Johnny. If they ever get us in a police station, you know what it means. Yeah, this stick will never take us to no police station. Are you coming out or do we have to come in and get you? To arrest us all. Yeah, wait and see if he does. Come on. When you hit that ground, Bill, you'll want to be running. Follow me and Johnny and don't pay no attention to that copper. Let's go now. Stop right where you are. Stop, I say. He's shooting at us. Stuck in between these cars. Let him have it, Johnny. Uh, try to plug me, will you, copper? I'll show you. He's shooting while he runs. Yeah, and I'm going to stop him from doing both. You got him. He's down, flat on his face. He killed him, Johnny. Yeah, what of it? He was trying to plug us, wasn't he? Come on now. Take it on the land before the rest of the cops get here. I'm gonna stop over there by the highway and try to hitch a ride home. Oh, no, you ain't. You're sticking right with us. But you said the police would be expecting you to head north and you was going to fool them and go back to Los Angeles. And that's just what we are going to do. And you're going with us. Oh, no, I'm not. Don't stop here, you fool. You want them railroad cops to grab you? I'm going to Philadelphia, Johnny. Now get this, Bill, and get it straight. I don't know whether you'd squeal about me plugging that cop or not, and I ain't taking no chances. I'm no squealer. I still say I ain't taking no chances. Cops have their own ways of making guys talk, and if they ever get their hands on Wait you... Wait a minute. I told you fellas my mother was under arrest in Philly for a crime she didn't commit. And that's why I'm going home. You can go after me and Johnny find a safe hideout. You're not telling me when I'm going home. Do you think I'm going to let my mother sweat in jail just because you fellas want me to? Oh, Johnny. There's a car stopping over there. Duck down. Maybe a patrol car. There'll be a dozen of them looking for it. No. No, it ain't a police car. See? That guy's getting out. He's fixing something on a running board. Yeah. Tourist, maybe. Uh, we'll take a chance. Come on. We'll go back to Los Angeles. Not me. I'm going to Philadelphia. So I gotta get tough with you, huh? Hey, take that gun out of my rib and head for that car over there and make it snappy. All right. All right, you got me. Let's go. And if you think I won't plug you, you just open your trap about what I done to that yard detective. We gotta do this job quick, Johnny. We can't be seen standing here talking to that guy. Leave it to me. Having a little trouble, mister? 
Yeah? Oh, hello. No, no, not much trouble. I came here losing my, a couple of my suitcases off the running board. Oh, you got them fixed now? Yeah. Tight on, good and tight. <clears throat> yeah. This fellow will take me straight into Los Angeles, won't it? Yeah, it'll take us all straight into Los Angeles. What? Get in the back seat. Hey, what's what's Shut going up. On? Don't ask no questions. Just get in and hurry. That's right, Johnny. Now, see here, young get man. Get in before I drill you. File in there with him, Bill. Keep your eye on him, too, Johnny. I'll watch him. Get going. And don't drive too fast. Attention all cars. Be on the lookout for three boys, 18 to 20 years of age. Driving a Plymouth sedan, 3X3176, 3X176. This car was stolen and the owner slugged and left on the highway. These boys are thought to be the same that killed a railroad detective this day. They are armed and dangerous. That's all. Rolls and quits. That fellow at the filling station was telling a straight story. We ought to be spotting them three baby bandits mighty soon. Yeah, and I'd rather spot the toughest count in Alcatraz. Give an 18-year-old boy a gun, get him cornered, and you'll shoot quicker than grease lightning. Uh-oh. What do I see? You tell me. What do you see? Didn't that chap at the filling station say that the radiator on that Plymouth had a bad leak? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Let's go get him. Of course, there uh, may be more than one car with a leaky radiator on this highway. They're either traveling mighty fast or they're not very far ahead of us. A little trickle of water was, hasn't been on the road very long. There it is, miss. 3X176. Hey, it's going down. Going over the side of the road. Something funny about this, Joe. I don't see anybody in the, in the car except the driver. The other two are probably hiding in the back of the car getting ready to shoot it out with us. But we'll know in a second they've stopped. Get ready. Nice of you to stop and wait for us, son. Now, get your hands up. Yes, yes, sir, they're up. You can have the car. I didn't mean to steal it. I was just trying to get home. Well, you're just going to jail now. No, I've got to go home, I tell you. You may not know it, son, but you've changed your address. Go ahead, Mitchell. I'll drive this car. I want to show this young man the way to his new home. Well, I hope you can break him, Captain Wallace. Reeves and I worked on him for about three hours this morning. We can't get a thing out of him. Just says he wants to go home, man. Says he's got to get home. And he lied about his name and also about where he lived. Well, bring him in. I'll see what I can do. If you don't mind my suggesting it, Captain. Yeah? The boy's practically a nervous wreck. Yeah, well, uh, I'll go easy on him. Bring him in. Yes, sir. Come on in, son. I'll run over to the hospital now, Captain. I have a talk with the owner of the car. All right. Hello, Bill. Sit down. What's your last name? My name's George Malcolm. Now... We may as well start off right, son, and the right way is to tell the truth. Your name's not George Malcolm, and you don't live in Pittsburgh. We have a telegram here which states you're Bill Trent, and you live in Philadelphia. How'd you find out? Simplest thing in the world. If you look at the label on the inside of your overcoat, you'll see the name of the store in Philadelphia where you bought it. Yeah. Yeah, I see. And I forgot about writing my name on the label inside the pocket. <laughs> I guess I'm not very smart or I'd have torn that out, huh? No, you're not very smart, Bill, or you'd open up and tell us what you know be a lot better for you. Look, Captain, I said I wasn't smart, but you fellas take me for a fool. Tell you what I know and stay in jail for ten years, maybe? No. No, I'll tell you nothing. If you can keep me here for the rest of my life just because I won't talk, well, then you'll have to do it. You, uh, you got the wrong end of that match in your mouth, Bill. Here, there's a couple of fresh ones. Chew on them for a while. Oh, wait till they talk to the man that owns the car. He'll tell you I didn't hold him up. But He'll you... tell you I didn't steal the car. Well, you were found driving the car. <laughs> Sure, uh, I was driving it. Sure, I was, but I was trying to get away from... From whom? Well, I can't tell you. Then I'll tell you. First, you may as well know we've already talked to Mr. Barry, the man who owns the car, and we know you didn't hold him up. We also know that one of the other boys forced you in the back seat with Mr. Barry and held a gun on both of you. Now, you were trying to get away from those other two boys, Bill, weren't you? Sure. Sure, I was. Who were they? Can't tell you. How'd you happen to be with them when they held up Mr. Barry and stole his car? I can't tell you that either. Were you with them when they killed the railroad detective? I won't tell you anything. You're trying to make a rat out of me. You want me to be a squealer, don't you? But I won't do it. You can't make me. I'm going to let your mother stay in jail because you want to protect a couple of murderers, huh? I told you I've got to get home. The Philadelphia police say your mother's accused of killing your father. She didn't do it. She did it. Oh, why don't you let me out of here so I can go home and clear my mother's name? Why don't you clear your own name? Well, because... Don't you see? Johnny and Dick were trying to help me get home when all this trouble happened. I, 
I can't turn on them now. You're a bigger fool than I took you for, Bill. Those other two boys were framing you from the start. No. No, I won't believe that. We were trying to steal a ride on the freight train, but but I had to get home somehow, and and listen, that cop didn't have no right to shoot at us just because we were... How did you happen to be in Mr. Barry's car alone? Well, the the other boys hopped out, see, right after Johnny slugged Mr. Barry and and threw him from the car, and... Yes, go on. They they told me to go on on to Philadelphia and keep my mouth shut, and I was worried about Mother, and I guess I just turned the car around and started falling. No, 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 take it easy, sir. My mother didn't kill Dad, honest, she didn't. I did it. You hear, I did it. She's taking the blame to save me, but, but I didn't mean to kill him. He, he was beating me, and, and then he turned and, and, and hit Mother, and, and I slammed him with a chair. And, well, why don't you let me go home so I can help her? Where are Dick and Johnny now? I don't know. They tried to frame you with a car, Bill. They knew you'd be caught driving it. Now, where are they hiding? I don't know, I tell you. Why, well, they even left the gun in the car so you'd be accused of the murder of that yard detective. Now, where are those boys hiding? I don't know where they are. I don't care where they are. I'm not worrying about them. I'm only thinking about my mother. I've got to get to her. Can't you understand that? I've got to help her. You know where the boys lived here in Los Angeles? Yes. Did they tell you where they lived in Philadelphia? Yes. Will you help us to find them? Well, will you help me to get to my mother? If you'll tell us the truth, we'll help you. <laughs> All right. All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything. <laughs> Attorney Fitz. Bill Trent told all he knew. He was returned to Philadelphia, where he was able to clear his mother of the charge against her. He gave full cooperation to officers in the apprehension of Rutledge and Dick Morrow. They were arrested, returned to Los Angeles, and tried for the shooting of the railroad detective. Both received sentences in San Quentin Prison, where they are learning bitterly that crime does not pay. Thank you, Mr. Fritz. Now, just a reminder that tomorrow is the last day of the December test of loyalty. So don't forget your friendly gesture to the cast, the sponsor, and myself by seeing your Rio Grande dealer tomorrow. Tell him you're a Calling All Cars fan. Wish him a happy new year and vindicate the confidence we have in our Calling All Cars friends. And now, Mel Williamson, your writer and producer, Bill Hatch and his orchestra, your cast, and Jack Edwards, who played the part of Bill Trent, join me in wishing you a happy new year. Attention all cards, the cancellation broadcast 266 regarding the murder. Suspects in this case are now in custody. That's all. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. Rio Grande will present the case of the grass skirt. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.